In this video, we're going to start designing a recipe completed screen. And by doing this, we're going to illustrate some of the style effects that we can create on a pop-up overlay. Before we go through how to add styles, I want to go over here to the recipe details screen and I want to copy some of these things over to recipe details complete. So I could just hover over these elements and copy and paste onto this artboard or I can click on this artboard itself and if I go to export here, I can click on this export and I'll just export this at 2x and we can see a preview here of what it's going to look like. And let's go ahead and export this as a PNG and you can export this anywhere that you want. I'm going to export this on my desktop and now I want to bring it back into the project so I can click on the shapes tools, click on place image and if I jump into my desktop you can see the recipe details here. I'll just click open and now I'll place this right inside of here and we can scale it however we'd like and here this doesn't look exactly how we want it to and remember if we click on this image thumbnail we can use this crop feature and just pull this down so we see the top of it and all this is is an image hit return here and now let's click inside of here I'm just gonna nudge this over to make sure that we have the layering correct and now we copied this image inside of here and the reason why we did this is we want to create an overlay effect for a pop-up menu. Now to create the overlay color, we could click inside of here and add a fill that's a black solid fill, for example. And we can do that and turn the opacity down to 40% to show that it's overlaid. But if we do that, we can't add some effects to just this fill here. So instead of doing that, I'm going to click on this row and hit subtract and now I'll create a rectangle drag this over here and I want to create that same black fill with just a subtle opacity here and then one nice thing that I can do here is I can use this effects tool and instead of a drop shadow I actually want a background blur so I want the background of anything behind here to be blurred out and then I can change this to 20 pixels here to help it become really blurry and now I can change the opacity here let's try 20 percent or 30 percent and we can play with that as much as we want in fact I may choose to have this white here so now we have a blurred white background and if we drag this rectangle here you can see what it's doing it's blurring everything behind this rectangle shape and I think that's looking really good and now we want a pop-up window telling us that our recipe is completed. So we can create another rectangle here. And I'm just going to make it maybe 240 by 300 right now. And we'll bring this down to the center. And this may be resized as the content fits in it. And we're going to add new content in a future video. So now I'll just change this color to white. I will add a 5 pixel radius to all the corners and it's starting to look good but we can see that there's very little or no contrast around the edges here. So one of the first things we want to do here is just add a subtle stroke and then we want to jump into our effects once again and this time we just want to add a subtle drop shadow and 4 pixels looks good, a 4 pixel blur, it's down 4 pixels and 25% looks decent. Now we may want to add another shadow down below that's a lot more blurry making this feel like it's popping out of the page quite a bit more. So if we want to do that we can add another drop shadow inside of here. We can have this be 20 pixel blur and we can see that that's really popping that off the page. And that's starting to look really good. I'm just going to decrease the opacity here. And so this is starting to look really good. But another thing we can do to really help pronounce this pop-up is draw a rectangle here to use as a shadow. And we'll just make this a little bit smaller than the rectangle here. And I'm just going to bring this down a few layers. There we go. And this rectangle can actually serve as a shadow. And to do that, we can change this color to black. And now if we jump into 
and we can change the radius. Let's change this to 30 pixels here. And now if we go into effects, instead of a background blur or a drop shadow or inner shadow, let's do a layer blur. So it's only blurring this actual layer. And here we want this blur to be 30 pixels. Let's start out at 30. Um, and let's try maybe 50 pixels here. So that's looking really good. And then the actual opacity of this fill, let's change this to 15%. And you can hardly see that, so I'm gonna try 30%. Sometimes it's just trying a few numbers to see what works. So that's starting to look decent here. And we can just fiddle around with the sizes and what exactly we like. And I'm going to change this to multiply. And let's just tweak this a little bit more to see what we like. Something like that should be good. So we have a nice completed screen here. We have some drop shadow effects, some layer blur effects, and some background blur effects here. And you can really play with a combination of these effects to get some really nice designs.